the gospel. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16, 30, 31. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What do I have to do to receive salvation? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and you will be saved and thy house. This is Vasily Spill for the time of the end, and I have a video here that in contrast to the last video I did, which was a bit sad, this one is good news. This one is a video that I'm going to enjoy doing. Because I got good news. Thank God I got the gospel. I believe the gospel. I understand the gospel. And it is the best message that we can share with anyone. If you're a saved believer, a saved Christian, a saint, I believe you're going to enjoy, pardon this pun, you're going to enjoy this video. But if you're someone that doesn't really understand the gospel... You need a video like this because it's going to make the gospel simple for you. And to those that think they're saved but believe in some kind of works, you're not going to like this video probably because I'm going to, I'm going to be sharing something that's going to go against the grain of what you believe in. But hopefully, even if you don't understand the gospel and you think that works have something to do with salvation, hopefully... God can use this video, use me, to help you see that gospel's simple and you've been misled. We have to believe what the Bible says in everything. So this is what I got for you. I got salvation is being saved from an eternity in hell and a lake of fire. How do we receive the salvation? By believing, trusting on the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing more, nothing less. The word believe means to trust. And we see this in Ephesians uh, chapter 1 verse 13 where it reads, In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So we see here, trusted, believed are synonymous words. They're interchangeable and they mean the same thing. I want to show you scriptures from Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Son of God, the Word of God, God manifest in the flesh, the Savior of mankind. What does it say here in Mark? Chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel. So, preaching the good news of the kingdom of God. And saying, the time is fulfilled. And saying, the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now, here is where a lot of people stumble. They stumble at the word repent. People do not understand that the word repent simply means change your mind or rethink, reconsider. That's all it means. It does not mean repent of your sins. It does not mean that. You can repent about anything. You can repent about the job that you're working at. You can repent repent about the color of clothes that you decided to wear today. Repent in the context of salvation is simply changing your mind and believing in the gospel. That's what Jesus taught. He didn't teach repent of your sins and be saved and believe the gospel. Nope. And for salvation, we need to repent of whatever is keeping us from believing the gospel. False religion, pride, dead works, as it's put in Hebrews 6, false gospel. So we need to 
repent of these things and we have to simply trust the Lord Jesus Christ to save us. That's how simple receiving salvation is. We just got to repent of our dead works, repent of believing in another gospel, repent of whatever is keeping us from believing the gospel, like a religion and pride, and just trust alone on Jesus Christ to save us. The Lord Jesus Christ said in John chapter 3, verses 15 down to 18, it says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen. It doesn't say he that believeth on him and does not repent of his sins is not condemned, or he that gets baptized is not condemned, or he that changes his life and gives his life to the Lord is not condemned. It doesn't say calling upon the name of the Lord is not condemned. It doesn't say any of these things in addition to belief because salvation has got nothing to do with those kind of things. Those kind of things are good things to do, but none of those things have anything to do with salvation. Salvation is simply believing on Jesus to save you. John 5, 24. What did the Lord Jesus Christ say in this verse? The Lord said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life again just believing on the lord and you have everlasting life life that never ends that's what everlasting life means and shall not come into condemnation you're not going to be going to hell once you believe on the lord you are passed from death hell, lake of fire, unto life, everlasting, eternal life that lasts forever. That's a beautiful verse, one of my favorites. The Lord here in John chapter 6, verses 28 and 29, what does he say? Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Again, just believe on Jesus. That's always requiring of you to receive eternal life. John 6, 47. Very simple verse. One of my favorites again. How simple can it get? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believeth on Jesus has everlasting life, eternal life. It's that simple. But we want to change, some of us, the gospel and make it more complicated. We want to add something that we want to do. But it's not about that. What did John Baptist say? In John 3, 36, he said, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life and he that believeth not the son shall not see life but the wrath of god abideth on him john the baptist had the same message the same gospel he that believes on jesus has everlasting life and if you do not believe on jesus you do not have everlasting life but the wrath of god abideth on you simple why are we complicating things acts Chapter 8, verses 34 to 38. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ 
is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Here we have someone, uh, the, the eunuch, who asked Philip, you know, what, uh, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, you have to believe with all thine heart. And that's what he did. That's what the eunuch did. The eunuch gave a profession of faith that he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. This is an example that shows us that believing is all that's required for salvation. It doesn't say anything here about if thou, you know, if you have repented and believed the gospel, if you've believed the gospel and done this, that, or the other. Some people want to turn to this chapter and these verses and, and, and show that confession is a part of salvation. Like you have to call upon the name of the Lord to receive the free gift. That's not what it teaches. Not at all. Salvation is simply believing on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Again, here it doesn't say if thou believest and calls upon the name of the Lord thou thy heart thou mayest. It doesn't say that either. Philip, when he heard the eunuch utter the words that, that he believed uh, that Jesus Christ is Son of God, he received a verbal confirmation of what already existed in the heart of the eunuch. That's it. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Salvation is simply believing the gospel. Salvation is not calling upon the name of the Lord to be saved. People have misunderstood what calling upon the name of the Lord even means. But that's something really for another study. But you got to think about this. These are clear-cut scriptures I'm going to give you that show that just believing on Jesus, just trusting on Jesus is alone, is what's required alone to receive the free gift of eternal life. Acts 10.43 to him, that him being Jesus, give all the prophets witness, all, that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Again, this is one of my favorite verses. Because it shows that throughout the entire Bible, salvation has always been by believing on Jesus Christ. By, by trusting on Jesus, by trusting on Jesus, is how you receive the free gift of eternal life and the remission or the forgiveness of sins. It doesn't say anything here about repenting of your sins, about baptism, about turning over a new leaf, about enduring to the end, about calling upon the name of the Lord. Nothing. Just believing, trusting on Jesus. Acts 8, chapter 13, verse 38 and 39. Be it known unto you, therefore man and brethren, that through this man, that man being Jesus, is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that do what? All that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Again, believing is how we receive justification. And we do not believe, we do not receive this justification by the works of the law. This is one of those verses that shows that you know, the forgiveness of sins is not by the works of the law. It's by believing on Jesus Christ. That's how we receive justification. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And as Christians, we should not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that does what? That believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Simple. Romans chapter 4, verses 2 down to 6. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God and it 
was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, that being Jesus that justifies us, his faith is counted for righteousness. Again, crystal clear, we're not saved. We're not justified by the works of the law. We're not, we're not saved by keeping the law. We're saved by grace through faith and the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and the finished work of the cross and his death, believing in his death, burial, and bodily resurrection. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. There's no works involved for receiving salvation. None. Works has got to do with discipleship. With how you choose to live your live your life. That's what it's got to do with. Famous scriptures, guys. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verses 1 down to 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and, there was, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. It's believing is how we receive this salvation, guys. It's got nothing to do. You, you won't see here anywhere about repenting of your sins or anything like that. It's nowhere found in the Bible that you have to repent of your sins to be saved. That you have to get baptized to be saved or do anything else other than believe in the gospel. Gal Galatians 2 verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. One of the best verses that shows that salvation is by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we receive it. We're not justified by the works of the law. And again, it says, uh, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So this is another verse that shows that from Adam to the last man, that no one has ever been justified in the sight of God by the works of the law. Absolutely no one. Not a single soul. First John chapter 5, verses 10 down to 13. He that believeth in the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Again, guys, the key here is the word believing. It's mentioned, I think, three times here. So, you just got to believe on Jesus Christ, and that's how you are saved. You're saved by believing on the Lord. And if we do not um, believe the record that God gave His Son, and that record is eternal life, then we don't have eternal life. Uh, to be saved, you have to actually, be I believe, to be saved, you have to believe that what you're receiving is eternal life. Because if you do not believe that you're receiving eternal life in essence what you're saying is that well i guess that i have to do something to stay saved i mean i can't just live however i want to live you know i can lose my salvation if i commit murder if i commit adultery if i you name, you name your sin when you believe the gospel you're just simply trusting alone in jesus christ to save you no matter what sins you do because all your sins are paid and washed by the blood of Jesus. Again, salvation is either by your obedience and works of the law, or it's by grace and it's received through faith alone and what Jesus did for you. So we have to believe in eternal life. Now, I have here how the Bible shows <coughs> how faith, which is the same as believing, is used again throughout, uh, well, particularly, 
And now I'm going to focus on the word faith. Romans 3, 23, 28. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God had sent forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, His righteousness, that He might be just and the justifier of Him which believeth in Jesus. Again, it's just believing, trusting in Jesus, putting your faith in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law? Of works? Nay, no. But by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. We are justified. We are, we are seen as uh, being justified in, in, in the eyes of God by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ without any works of the law, guys. Without the deeds of the law. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 10. For by grace are you saved through faith. It doesn't say through repenting of your sins. It doesn't say of baptism. It doesn't say of calling upon the name of the Lord. It doesn't say of enduring, having enduring faith until the end. It doesn't say of, it doesn't say through the works of the law. Nothing, guys. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we, as his, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus on two good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Again, crystal clear scriptures that shows that we're saved by grace through faith. We're not saved by the works of the law, guys. Salvation is the gift of God. And we should do good works. We should. And some people want to say that if you have truly believed the gospel, that you will have good works. But it doesn't say that. It says that we should walk in them. We should work, walk in the good works that God hath ordained for us. But again, salvation, guys, is only by receiving the free gift of eternal life. And we receive that by believing in the gospel. What we do... After we're saved, it's got to do with our Christian walk. It's got to do with rewards in heaven. It's got to do with our obedience and, and sh obedience unto the Lord and showing the Lord that we love Him. It's got nothing to do with salvation. Jude 1, verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. We need to stand fast in the faith. We need to fight for the faith. We got, we got to fight for the gospel because the gospel is being attacked every day by non-believers that think they're saved, but they're not because they're really trusting in the works. And it's even being attacked by Christians that have fallen away from the simplicity of the gospel and are starting to believe in another gospel. So we need to do our part to fight for the faith, guys. we got to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish with what I started with from Acts chapter 16, verse 30 and 31. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And he said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in the house. Believe in the Lord. It's not believe in the Lord and call upon thee in the Lord to be saved. It's not believe in the Lord and repent of your sins and thou shalt be saved. It's not believe in the Lord and get baptized and thou shalt be saved. It's not believe in the Lord, have good works and thou shalt be saved. It's not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, turn over a new life, turn over a new leaf, give your life over to Jesus, bear fruit, nothing guys. It's just trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's a promise guys. Believe the promise if you have it. Thank you for listening. This is Vasily Spill for the time of the end. God bless you. Bye for now. Thank you.